Hi guys and girls, I'm Karel Segers from the Story Department and in this video I will be going on a rant. More about that in a minute. After the rant, we're going back to the log lines that didn't find time during our live stream recently where Nir and I will be reviewing a few of those and give you some feedback and hopefully some advice on how to do better. And then uh, at the end of this video, I'll give you a few websites that I recommend where you can learn the skills you need to write screenplays that the industry likes to read. Good, so my rant. I read scripts for a living. I um, give advice to screenwriters, to producers, and I'm very proud this month, not one, but two movies are going into production that I have worked on. In fact, one is in production right now in Canberra, Australia's capital. That's the horror movie, The Furies, written and directed by Tony D'Aquino. The other one, later this month, in production in Queensland, Danger Close, a $16 million Australian uh, Vietnam War movie directed by Chris Stenders. And I co-wrote it as a member of the Story Shop. Now, that doesn't happen very often that you have two movies in production in the same month. And I'm very proud about the scripts, one written by Tony D'Aquino, the other written by a team. And... If you look at the number of screenplays that make it through the hurdles and the filters all the way to production, there aren't very many. I read screenplays where I wonder how it comes that they don't get made because they're so strong. Unfortunately, most of the scripts I read, I have my doubts about whether they ever will have a chance. And then there's the type of screenplay where I don't understand how the writer couldn't have done any better. What I mean by that is there are certain aspects of the skill and the craft of screenwriting that you can learn that are fairly simple, that you don't need to be incredibly talented to get them right. What I'm talking about now is the so-called rules of formatting, formatting and style. I read a script where the writer seemed to have never read a recent uh, or contemporary screenplay the errors, the mistakes against common standard industry uh, formatting were so flagrant. And that's a shame because they had a team behind them. The, the writer had a whole team behind them and they could produce the film. But it was very hard to even assess the story when ultimately I managed to dig through all the confusion um, and the, the questions and the distractions of this flawed uh, formatting and style. As I could have guessed, the story didn't work either. So here's another reason why it is important that you get your style and formatting rules right. Because they are a red flag. Any reader having to deal with obvious breaches of standard screenwriting principles will suspect that there's something wrong with the story. And sometimes that really colors the reading, it colors the experience. This means that if you do get your style right, you already bring the reader in a better mindset. You make them more benevolent to your story. Not only will the story be more transparent and the reader can immerse themselves without having to do the mental work of trying to understand what you're trying to say. So in that way, the story will sing. So what do you need to do? What can you do in order to learn the principles? It's very simple. Read screenplays. Read recent spec screenplays. There are plenty you can download from the internet. Every year around Oscar time, there are a few that each studio uploads for considerations for the Oscars. And, um, you know, there have been lots of them at various websites such as um, Simply Scripts and uh, Drew Script or Rama and so on. So you need to read those, pr preferably the PDF versions, the original scripts, and you, read, you need to read lots of them. I'd say 5, 10, 20 before you write your first own screenplay. So read those scripts, study them, and even write some of it. I mean, copy some of it. I designed a screenplay, a uh, screenwriting course a few years ago, and the heart of that course was to read screenplays and hand copy one. So you assimilate in a way 
by way of immersion, the principles of proper screenwriting. And that's also the name of that course. It's immersion. I give you the, the uh, site details at the end of this video. In fact, they're down below this video as well. So that's, that's about my rant. You really need to make that effort because otherwise all the time and all the energy that went into creating the story will go to waste because there are thousands of screenwriters that are willing to make the effort to learn the craft and deliver their screenplay in a standard format where it is easy to read. Okay, enough for now. Sleepaholic student from Los Angeles is determined to find the girl in his dreams eventually leading him to a spiritual world called soul space, an intermediate dimension which exists between heaven and hell. Uh, okay. So, Ashes123, same message. Go to our guidelines because your logline is so far off what the industry needs that I don't even know where to start. It's, it's a, a, unfortunately, it's a bit, bit of a mishmash. So we can't comment on the plot because we simply do not know what it is. He wants, it's a, it's a boy meet girl that the girl doesn't even exist. Basically. It's kind of like, it's this girl in his dreams. Then he's going to go out in real life and find her, but he doesn't even know if she exists. Um, yeah, like, like you said, it's missing the very fundamental elements that we need to be able to assess a story. Uh, and, and otherwise it's, a sleepaholic student from Los Angeles is irrelevant. It's not describing much. He's determined to find his girl of his dreams. Fine. Again, that's not related to the plot. Uh, event, action, main character, and a goal. That is what we need. We, we actually have a goal. Determined to find the girl of his dreams. Everything else is, yeah, too big. Next one from Variable. There are two log lines here from Variable. Um, they both have the structure that we recommend. I'll read the first one. After his colony uh, laughs on his claims of rising sea level, Mr. Penguin sets out with his family to reach high grounds before the ice melts. It has a little bit of a happy feet flavor to it. I like this. It has a clear goal. It has a clear problem, a clear inciting incident. And Mr. Penguin is pure. He, we can see him as a hero but still, I'd like to see some sort of journey there. Why is it that they don't that they laugh at him? So there's there's something about him that gives the impression that he is not worthy. Otherwise, he may not be confident enough. You know what's coming to mind when I read that? A biblical prophet, really. I mean, in a mythological sense, Mr. Penguin is a like a biblical. He's like Noah. Yeah. All right? Telling people, guys, believe me, take my word for it. This big thing's going to happen. We're all going to drown. I'm building this boat. You're welcome to come and join me. Everyone laughed at him. Nobody went on the boat with him except his family. It's in every disaster movie. Yeah. The character so, warning the world but not being taken seriously. So I think that he's, that inadvertently variable has actually tapped into a very strong archetype, yeah. um, which I believe is what attracted me to this. This was which why I went, oh, this is interesting. And I think what made me thought that is when he says after his colony laughs, that, you know, I mean, that to me straight away gave me that archetype feel. Um, I recently watched the classic Tora 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 for the first time, and there's about a dozen of these characters warning the Americans of impending doom and indeed. obviously being ignored. The problem is that when you have more than one, it dilutes the impact of the message. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, but when you have one person, then you see, right, not only is it an underdog, it's a, a just underdog that needs that save everyone but you know they're doing the best they can with what they've got i wouldn't um, say it was diluted in torah 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 it was actually you know reinforcing the message making the outcome even more unlikely yeah anyway let's let's uh, move to the next one from variable after her big crush reveals himself as a werewolf werewolf a vampire girl must find a way around her orthodox yeah. family to before, get before we bounce off i just think one last question one last note worth mentioning about variables last one is I'm not, I think it would be great if they could, if they could, he could, or she could describe the uh, uh, main obstacle that's preventing Mr. Penguin and his family from reaching higher ground. Because right now, set out with his family to reach higher ground. Cool, great, no problems. What's the problem? You know, if there was something stopping them from reaching higher grounds, and therefore we, the audience, would want to see them getting over that obstacle, would really elevate this concept. Yeah, true. All right. So, 
After a big crush reveals himself as a werewolf, a vampire girl must find a way around her orthodox family to get together. So again, I, I'd like to have a quick look at this one as well because it has a good structure. We should be able to give an assessment fairly quickly, very, very easily. So character, vampire girl, event, big crush reveals himself as a werewolf, action must find a way around her orthodox family to get together. So the vampire girl, her flaw is the fact that she's a vampire, right? But then why is, yeah, I guess the, it's, Not because really. it's a love story, but when you have a love story, you have dual journey. So it's, maybe it's a Romeo and Juliet story. So the one is a werewolf, the other vampire, they don't belong together. The orthodox family doesn't want them together. So I, you, uh, there's certain elements of, um, uh, of, of, a genre that need to be clear to the audience. I don't think all audience members or all logline readers would necessarily know that vampires and werewolves are eternal enemies. In fact, I didn't realize that was the case up until that moon, that very successful franchise that went off a book um, about young kids, teenagers that are vampires. I learned it from um, what we did in the shadows, but I know you're, you're after Twilight, aren't you? Twilight, thank you, that's the one. So. I haven't I up until then that vampires and werewolves had a problem with each other. Or maybe that maybe they didn't. Maybe that's just something they invented into that genre, into the uh, franchise to create the drama that they needed. Yeah. What we do in the shadows, same thing. So again, if that is a given, then it needs to be described because it's, I don't know. It, it, I don't think it's that, that obvious. What do you think? Um, it, if it's genre and if it targets the, that particular audience, the fans of the genre, then you don't need to cl clarify. But if you want to go mainstream, then maybe you need to. Yeah. Um, Spoon on the Wall, is that an existing film? Because I'm expecting someone to basically trying to trap us and write a logline of the, for an existing film and we're going to completely tear it, tear it apart and make absolute fools of ourselves. It will happen, you're aware of that, right? Point. At some yeah. point, yeah. So, had, there's been a few people, sorry, there's been a few people that posted examples and didn't write the name of the movie, and I don't know if they were trying to be clever or not, but uh, we managed to post back responses identifying exactly which film it was. Now, this doesn't seem to be complete, so we may skip, it, uh, skip over it. An undercover policewoman lures a member of the Albanian mafia into a sexual relationship in order to inf infiltrate and expose, yeah, infiltrate and expose them, I guess. And then the dot, dot, dot is mystery and suspense. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, what's lacking is an event. What triggered this action? What uh, made this undercover policewoman make that decision so what's the motivation what's the the major event the inciting incident in the movie that triggers the story and it makes her go into this special world but yeah i can see this i can see this work could be interesting but the thing is it's a it's a policewoman doing her job undercover police men and women go on to pretend to be other people and that includes having sex with targets it happens you know um, the americans look at you know the, the the TV show The Americans. Yeah, good example. It happened in even in um, what? That yeah. was not police. That was spies. But yeah, this is here extended to police. Same thing. Yeah. Uh, so I don't believe this is necessarily an out of the ordinary event. This is a, a regular run of the mill. This is what the policeman does on their job. So maybe make it more interesting by clarifying, <laughs> specifying who is it that she is having this sexual relationship with, and yeah. how is that explosive. How is that necessarily leading to disaster? So we need something, you, you, it needs to be um, a collision course. We need to, we need to see that this, this is going to lead to, yeah, big, big explosives, you know, big drama, explosives. yeah. Or what's, or what's otherwise the personal con uh, uh, connection? Why, why does it have to be this policewoman? Why is her story any more interesting than another policewoman doing the exact same thing in a, state in another state that's right um yeah shall we um move to the next one sure i have looking for h2o hmm. a devious and successful career mum is forced to confront her prejudices 
as her transgender son and her Swedish au pair gang up to provide the requested sumptuous banquet for her terribly imported dinner guests. So I'm going to read it again. A devious and successful career mom is forced to confront her prejudices as her transgender son and her Swedish au pair gang, uh, sorry, and her Swedish, Swedish au pair gang up to provide the requested sumptuous banquet for her terribly imported dinner guests. Why is she devious? How's that connected? She's, you know, what we need here is she's prejudiced. So that's what I'm getting at. Wrong adjective. It's the, yeah. main, it's the main, the main inner journey is going to be about the yeah. mom overcoming her prejudices. So that should be the qualifier when you describe the character. So a prejudiced career mom, um, or a bigoted and successful career, a bigoted career mom yeah. is forced to confront her prejudices. Well, you, that's really in a journey. So we need to see the inciting incident more clearly when her transgender son and uh, yeah. her au pair. Yeah, it's, it's, what, it's, not, it's, what, it's what forced her to need the transgender. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. But what is it? We don't know. When her, okay, after her chef comes down with a flu or whatever, after her catering company shuts down, a bigoted, a bigoted and successful career mum is forced to confront. But even then, I'm sorry, she's specifying that she's forced, or she or, she or he are, are specifying that this character is forced to confront her prejudices, prejudices. In other words, they're telling us what the inner journey is, and that shouldn't be the case. Just tell us what the plot is and insinuate the inner journey by describing her flaw. So yeah. If you bigot, if you've got a transgender son, we, the reader, will know that she'll be forced to confront her prejudices. If, for those who saw our live stream, in a sense, structurally, um, this is similar to the logline we had about the white uh, supremacist. It's the irony of the situation the, the prejudiced person find themselves in, because the person they are prejudiced towards is going to solve their problem. So they have this inner conflict that they will have to go along and accept these people or this person against their, their prejudices. And then that way, hopefully, um, come to an insight and, and, and learn. So it, it, dramatically, it's a, it's a good setup. This is a, this is a, a, a good circumstance, a building of circumstances to have a character go through an experience that can be transformational. It, I think it's a matter of rewriting the logline and coming up with a good uh, inciting incident, a strong major event. The only one thing which I, I think is now popping up to me that really sort of hit me, her son is transgender and she's got a Swedish au pair. At what age do you no longer have the au pair? So presumably the son would be, is, is, in, is the au pair for the son? If so, he's a minor. Like we're talking 10 year olds. Can a 10 year old be defi define themselves as a transgender in a, very, in a legitimate, I mean, it, it, this is dealing with some very um, now-ish zeitgeist image. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah. There, but there, there may well be other kids. You know, there's probably, the family's probably larger. There's yeah. probably a, a younger kid. And the au pair, yeah, looks, uh, looks after the, the younger kid. Yeah, it might need to be specified just to clarify because it's dealing with such um, hot material. See, if your logline were written more elegantly, we would not have that issue. We would just... It would be, flow through it, yeah. A, a, a very well-written logline is a lubricant for minor story issues. We yeah. will, you know, it, if it sounds great and, you know, it doesn't require instant scrutiny, then you may get away with it. So make an, a, an extra effort and, and avoid having, you know, us reconstruct and putting the pieces together. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, I think that was a, that was a good session, Neil. Yep. Thanks, thanks for joining us. And um, uh, the, the, for those who were listening or sitting in uh, on our live stream, if you missed your logline and we haven't addressed it in this session, then we'll do it next time. And it may well be tomorrow. So stay tuned. Thanks a lot. Sorry about that short green artifact you saw at some point um, over our heads. Don't know exactly why that is. Must have to do something with codex and conversion. I promised I would give you the websites that I recommend. First of all, and completely free, there's Logline It. 
If you have a story you want to bring to the screen, you need to logline it. So the website is called logline.it and there you can write your one sentence summary of your story and in this way also prove that you have a story. We recommend you write it in a particular format. That format is explained on the website. If you go to the top where it says our formula, just read through. It explains our thinking behind writing development log lines. And then the other website is Immersion Screenwriting. Uh, very simple, screenwriting.courses. That's where you'll find the course where you learn how to write screenplays following the accepted industry format by reading 20 of the best screenplays ever written in a proper format. And then you will also hand copy one screenplay that you can pick from another list of 20. So um, if that interests you, have a look at the link down below. So if you found this video useful, please give us a like. Much better even subscribe to the channel. That makes me intensely happy. And um, you'll also be notified next time we upload a video. And I promise you, we will do whatever we can to make these videos better and better and ultimately serve you as best we can. If you have a question, just post it down below the video and who knows, maybe that question will be answered in the next one. See you then. <laughs>